Hey guys, we are in the basement. Today we're gonna do something kind of totally different. Something kind of fun. Cause you see, when I was a kid, okay, when I, you know, we're talking like 1982, 83, 84, 85, whatever. My favorite game, my favorite arcade game, without a doubt, was Donkey Kong. I mean, I loved freaking Donkey Kong. I mean, it was my favorite arcade game when I was a kid, and, and fortunately, as an adult, I have one right here. And, you know, and I, I play this a lot still. You know, I, I don't get sick of Donkey Kong. You know, it's it's got everything. You know, it's Nintendo, it's Mario, uh, it's, it's, it's fun, the level design is great, the controls are tight, you know. It's just an awesome experience. You know, everything about it, I love Donkey Kong. And this game came out in 1981 in the arcades. However, in 82, 83, 84, you know, I was playing a lot of Donkey Kong, but not in the arcades, you know. I was playing Donkey Kong in my bedroom. Yeah, that's true. And, and you know, originally, initially, I had it for my Atari 2600, and that was a horrible version. I mean, it was absolutely just horrific. Um, it was, you know, it, it was released by Coleco. It, it was really just an embarrassment, you know. But then, yeah, I got my Atari 800 XL computer, right? I got that for Christmas one year. I don't remember. I, it, I was in fifth or sixth grade. Um, I had to have been probably around 12, uh, 11, 13, around there. And I thought today in this video, we'd hook up my Atari 800 XL and play some Donkey Kong because I've been wanting to do this actually because this thing has been just collecting dust over there. I've had it kind of in storage in a box and I often think about this thing because this was such a big part of my life. I mean, it was a giant part of my life, you know, from like probably fifth, sixth grade, all the way through high school. Um, I used this thing for like five, six years straight. And it was all I did. I mean, I was so into this. My buddy and I, we had a BBS that we called bad. Uh, we, initially we called, uh, actually, <laughs> Mine was called Badland BBS that I never got off the ground because my handle back then was Johnny B. Bad. <laughs> I know, right? And then my friend Clint, him and I started a BBS called he his his nickname was Spidey on the on the on the BBSs. And I was Johnny B. Bad. And he started a BBS called The Web, right? Wow, really? Yeah, we, we had a BBS called The Web. We were the internet before the internet, and it was called The Web. Crazy. But he was Spidey, so it was this whole kind of Spider-Man thing. And so we had his BBS, and it was a Where's BBS, where there's a lot of piracy going on, and people would log in and download games, and, and you could only have, like, one connection at a time to the... It was in Clint's bedroom, the BBS, and, and he had... Uh, his parents got him a dedicated phone line just for his bedroom which was a big deal back then and everything went through a modem you know this was my modem right here i had an xm301 this is a 300 baud modem and actually my dad took it away i i haven't seen it since probably i was a kid um all i have left is the box because we got a really big phone bill one month and he just took my modem and threw it in his safe and all i have left is the box and my dad probably still has it at in my parents house but uh anyway we had this bbs and it was a where's BBS. It was pirating. I mean, we were 11 and 12, man. We can get away with that shit, right? So so people would log into this BBS, and they would download games and uh, upload games. And we basically would share all these games, you know, with each other, with the users. And, and they, you know, in order to download something from the BBS, they had to upload something. And so eventually... You know, I, I amassed a, a gigantic collection of games for the Atari 800 XL. And, and these are actually all my floppies from when I was a kid. I had a Super Mario sticker on here. Um, this was a Team Associated sticker. I was really into RC cars. Um, here's Metro Fast Raceways and Hobby in Hanover Park, Illinois. Um, but you could kind of, this is kind of a snapshot into my life when I was a kid. But, uh, but yeah, these are these were how the games were, man. You would save them on these floppy disks. These are five and a quarter floppies, and again, these are all pirated copies. I mean, I was listen. I was a kid when I did this. Leave me alone. Um, I do not believe in piracy today at all. Um, 
you know, especially when it comes to music and, and you know, modern PC games and stuff. But anyway, um, so we would, you know, save them on the floppies. We create little menu systems. You know, this disc here has Bruce Lee and zombies and up and down and joust and track and field. And it's funny because a lot of these games, here's Gauntlet. Um, a lot of these games were arcade games that I own now in my basement, and I was playing. Oh, here's my my Badland BBS. This was I never made my own BBS. I always was kind of riding on the coattails of my friends' uh, BBS called the Web. But I always wanted to start my own, and, and I started designing it on this disc here, and I called it Band Badland BBS. And there you go. There's a drawing I did when I was a kid. But uh, so yeah, we would we would just pirate like heck and get all these games and save them on all these floppies and. And, you know, the one game I played a lot, I remember this, I played Donkey Kong. And here's my Donkey Kong. And we're going to play this today. I'm going to show you guys. And if you guys like this, you know, maybe we'll do more of these Atari 800 videos. Because I've got a lot of stuff here. And, and really, some of it is arcade related. Because, like I said, there's Joust here and Track and Field. Um, up and Down, That's that's an art. that was an arcade game. Decathlon, that was great. Uh, Droll, I loved Droll. That was... That was one of my favorite games, Droll. Um, Solo Flight, Star Bowl, Football, Bruce Lee, P I got Pango, um, Ball Blaster, that was a Lucas Art Games. Mule, Mule was amazing. Uh, Motocross, Sky Blaze, Hardball. Um, so yeah, on and on and on. Gumball, World Karate. Some of these aren't labeled. I don't know if these are Blinks. Uh, Karateka, that was great. Zorro. Um, what else is over here? DOS, Knight Riders. Anyway, why don't we set up though? I'll just kind of show you guys how this whole thing works and kind of give you a glimpse into my childhood. Um, let me grab my tripod here and I'm going to show you guys how Donkey Kong plays on the Atari 800XL. Okay, so I have my Atari 800XL. I have my 13-inch Emerson color television. This was in my bedroom. I still have it. This is from fifth grade or sixth grade or something like that. I still have this. This was such a big deal when I got a color TV in my bedroom. And I, you know, I... In, I tried to, like I because I had Pong originally with a black and white TV, and then I got the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, but that was never in my bedroom. That was in the family. That was on the family TV, and then I got the Atari Eight Hundred XL, and then uh, when I was around fifteen, <clears throat> I got the NES, and really this dominated my life um, pretty much that entire time between uh, between having. Uh, basically, it went from the 2600 to the 800 XL, and then the NES. And there was like a two, three year gap there between this and the NES. And this thing was my life. And really, even after I got the NES, I was still into this thing because th this was just endless fun. So, and also, here's my joystick. Um, I was so proud of this thing. I got this like at like a flea market with my dad. Um, and this is a real arcade micro switch joystick that has like the Atari, you know, plug. It's got the same exact plug for Atari 2600. So the 800 XL, all the Atari computers are all compatible with the uh, the 2600 joysticks. And so, um, but this one was just fantastic. And this was designed to work with the 2600 and all the computers. And it was the. Uh, uh, I don't know, the design video production, Waterford, Connecticut. I don't know, it's the Super Stick, and this thing's awesome. It's just like a real micro switch joystick. So, and then over here, this is my Indus GT hard drive. And uh, this was like kind of like the Cadillac of hard drives. And by the way, I was very fortunate to have all this as a kid. Uh, my parents were far from rich and well off. And, uh, you know, my mom really believed in me having computers and being exposed to computers in, in, in that at that time. And I look back on that, and man, that, that really has kind of helped me in my life because I was just kind of exposed to technology and just tinkering and trying to figure stuff out at such an early age. And I used to program basic games on here. I mean, I was so into this thing. So, all right, so anyway, here's the Indus GT drive. Actually, let's turn, let's turn the TV on. Look at that, we got some static. It's on channel three, because that was the requirement here. Okay, I'll just turn it down for now. And then we want to turn on, actually, if you turn this on with, with, uh, it's all staticky. If you turn, if you turn this on uh, with no disc in there, you just get like a basic prompt right here. And uh, I, you know, I dabbled in basic when I was a kid. I used to make games and stuff, and I, you know, you know, this was like the most basic one, you know, 10, the question mark is print, right? So in quotation, you know, I could do John rules and then, and then 20 
go to 10. You know, everyone would do stuff like this. This is like your first basic program and then type run and then it would just print John rules a million times and I don't know, it was, <laughs> it was fun. So list and then, uh, so yeah, you know, basic, that was that was basically how the computer worked when you got it. You, you would just turn on basic and that was all you had unless you had the hard drive. Actually, initially I had this, which was the cassette player and the games would literally come on like cassettes and this thing sucked because it would take like 15 minutes to load a game. Now you'd put a cassette in here and you'd hit play and you'd boot up the computer and it would literally take like 15, 20 minutes for the game to load onto the computer and it was just horrific. And then I got the hard drive, and and wow, that that was a big deal. So, all right, so let me turn on the hard drive. I mean the uh, the floppy drive, and we're gonna put in the Donkey Kong. Uh, you, you'll see here. I, I have like a little menu system and stuff. So we're gonna stick this in. And you can see how it kind of like slides in there. I mean, you guys who are younger, man. You don't know how good you have it, cause you know we didn't have any. We didn't really have the internet, you know. And we didn't really have really good technology. I mean, these floppies didn't hold much of anything. So, all right, so we got the disc loaded up. And so what we're going to do now, I want to lower the tripod a little bit, actually. It's funny how I still remember how to do this stuff. <laughs> all right, so let me kind of get this on the TV. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn off the computer. And then the trick with this is you have to hold down the option button to get it to boot into the floppy. So let me turn it on the computer. I'm going to turn on the Atari and then it's going to boot. I've got a lot of static here. Okay, so here is my little menu system I made. I used to make these menus all the time. And here it says, John says pick one. And, and it's funny because <clears throat> a 12-year-old John wrote that. <laughs> John says pick one. And on this floppy drive I have Donkey Kong, E.T., phone at home I guess, I don't know, Pengo, Tennis, Asteroids, Jawbreaker, and Dodge. And in this video we're gonna really just talk about Donkey Kong. Maybe I'll, if you guys like these I'll do more of these videos and we could play some of the other games. So I'm gonna press number one and we're gonna start Donkey Kong. You can hear it loading. It would make like this cool beeping sound when it was loading. Alright, so it's loading, loading, loading. Turn this light off here. Boy, that static is really bothering me. I'm trying to dial it out. So, okay, so here it is. Now you gotta remember uh, and understand something. Donkey Kong in the arcade was like so elite and, and you really, no one really captured it at all at home, at all. I mean, the ColecoVision was kind of close. <clears throat> the Atari 2600 was, um, was miles away from it. I mean, it was not even close. Um, but really, for me at the time, this version of Donkey Kong is hands down the best home version of Donkey Kong. And for a lot of reasons, I'm trying to see if I can get rid of that static. Um, for a lot of reasons, too, because uh, it had all the levels, okay? I don't remember if the ColecoVision version had all the levels, and even the NES version didn't have all the levels. It was missing the Pie Factory, and I still don't know why they did that. Um, but this one had all the levels, and there's actually a big story about the guy that made this because, you know, these guys weren't given anything from Nintendo. They had no assets, no art, no code, no audio. These guys had, they basically had to play Donkey Kong a million times a day, take notes, you know, and just basically reverse engineer the arcade version and, and make it for the Atari 800, and they basically did their best to simulate it. So, all right, so, so let's play. So I just, oh, I, I guess this is the attract, actually. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and press start. What is happening right here? The game just start? I, th I think I pressed the button on the joystick. Oh no. All right, so I'm gonna press, uh, that must have been an attract. Interesting. All right, so it says select for two player and press option to pick difficulty, press start to play. All right, so we're gonna listen to those sounds though. I mean, that was legit. All right, so yeah, it looks a lot like Donkey Kong. It's missing one level though. Uh, it only has one, two, three, four, five. There should be six different levels. This joystick is sticking. Ugh. All right, I really want to show you guys all the levels in this. This 30 year old joystick is sticking. See, in the arcade Donkey Kong, I would be going up that final ladder on this side, not that side. So what do you guys think, huh? This is pretty legit, isn't it? 
<laughs> so here's the second level. The sounds are really good. I mean, I just, I can't imagine these guys programming this game with no help from Nintendo, basically just going to the arcade and just taking notes and, and trying to simulate the sounds. And yeah, you can even jump off the level there. So we cleared the second level there, and uh, you gotta admit, this is pretty damn tight, right? <laughs> this, and they did the right level order, which was like really impressive. For some reason, a lot of the uh, home console versions got the order of the levels wrong, which I never fully understood. I mean, how simple of a task was that? All right, so now we should be on the girder stage. Or the rivet stage, sorry. Look at me, man. Look at my mad DK skills. I don't really remember. Ah! See, that's not quite like the arcade. I wasn't really sure where to stand there. Joystick is kind of, I don't know, the micro switches are kind of sticking. Go! Alright. You guys like my staticky TV? Sorry, I don't, I just can't seem to get rid of that. And Ty, if you're watching this, I'm using the correct, uh, uh, a plug. I, before I was trying to use my NES. Uh, plug with this computer. God, the right is really sticking. So, is the next level... I think the next level is the Pie Factory, or does it go back to the first board? Yeah, it does. I just want to get to the Pie Factory. Oh, shit! Alright, come on, we have to pass that. So, the barrels are really behaving differently than the arcade one. I mean, I don't know what that barrel was doing there. Because you never would get hit like that in the arcade version. Oh, shit! Oh, man! Uh, I really wanted to show you guys the, the damn pie level. I didn't make it there. Hmm. What a bummer. Maybe I'll start our game and come back. All right, I'm going to play a game. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to play the game, and I'm going to come back and show you guys the pie level. All right, guys, I have played this game like four times, and I cannot get to the freaking pie factory. You just have to trust me. It's cool. Actually, here, I'll show you a screenshot of it, all right? There, it's in the game. That's what it looks like. That's the pie factory that's in Donkey Kong on the Atari 800. And it blew my 12-year-old mind. So anyway, yeah, I mean, that's it, man. That's my Atari 800. I mean, what do you guys think of that? Is that pretty cool? Um, I don't know. Should I show you guys anything else? I, I, you know, I might revisit this topic and maybe do some more videos. Um playing with this but uh you know I, I was looking at this disc this is my ataski art disc <clears throat> excuse me and uh <clears throat> i you know ataski was like atari's ascii okay you know ascii characters are just like a very generic uh 
character set that you can make artwork with. You've seen the Ataski art, you know, I mean, ASCII artwork. It's basically like asterisks and, and stuff like that. Well, Atari had their own version of ASCII that they called Ataski, and uh, you, you could make really cool art with it. And a lot of BBSs, the Atari BBSs, would all be run in Ataski art. So if you logged in to an Atari BBS on an Atari computer, you could see fully what you were, you know, what the designer intended, because it was all Ataski art. And uh, I used to really fool around a lot with this and uh, maybe I'll, why don't I show you guys some of my Ataski art okay I'm gonna have to load this disc up here let me turn this um, yeah, it's just kind of like a little bonus thing here but we'll just kind of check out some of my Ataski artwork that I made when I was a kid um, in high school or junior high or sixth grade whatever it was all right so we're booting up Hopefully this doesn't take too long. And this was a, uh, a program that I used to use to make little Atasky animations. And uh, it says Web DOS version, copyright 1989. It says time, current time is 3.45. Huh, okay, well, I don't know what time it is, it's about eight o'clock. And it says enter date, current date is October 7th, 1985. Wow, this is like a, this is like a time warp, man. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Oh, shit, I just hit break. I don't even know what I just did. I was going to type in the date. All right, so here we go. Um, so this is a, the, it says the web BBS. Oh, wow, there's our phone number and everything. Um, I don't remember what this was, but... I know that it's got the Ataski animator here because that's what I used to use. And the thing about the Atari computer is that we had to uh, get creative with all these menu systems because this is before Windows. You got, you got to understand that. There was no Windows. There was no mouse. There was, it was just a basic prompt, basically. And you would use that to load uh, files from the disk, and it was real cumbersome. So we would make all these menus, and there were there were like programs out there to make menu systems. And so my buddy Clint and I, who you know he had the web, and I guess he must have made this menu system for this disk. Um, and I don't really know what all these programs are: B Bulletin Generator, LeBreak Plus, iConvert. But I know that the Ataski Animator. We want to load that because that was. I'm gonna hit F. This was something I used a lot, and I think one of my animations is on this disc. And I could kind of show you guys this. So, let's see. Here we go. All right, so Ataski Animation, 1987, Mystery Inc. Um, so it says here, L, load graphics, and there, it says continue, make screen, clear graphics. And this thing here, and this right here, by the way, is Ataski. See how the it spells menu? That was using the Ataski characters. Um, it wasn't like, you know, graphics per se. It was basically just like a different font almost that you'd use to make all this stuff. And I used to make stuff all the time. So I'm going to press L. And it says here, file name or return for disk directory. So let's hit enter. And there it is, killer. That right there is one that I made. Um, I think I was in high school when I made that. Uh, let's, let's load that one. So K-I-L-L-E-R. Does this, does this really make me... All right, here we go. Copyright 1990, JBB Productions. That's Johnny B. Bad. April 26, 1990 is when I made this. And this was a little, like, movie I made using a Tasky art, and I called it The Trained Killer. The saga continues. I, I guess this was a sequel. I don't know if I made one before that. Um, do you guys like this? This is kind of weird, right? So, uh, so created by Johnny B. Bad. So I was so proud of this. I just remember. It's so cool that it still works. So I made these little animations here, and it was basically like this thing that would record everything you drew. And so I think that's the train killer there sitting in his house. Um, and I'm drawing his little house, and he's sitting there, and there's his couch. And, and it basically would record your movements of the cursor, and it says, The Train Killer at Home. Ring, ring. <laughs> Hello? Is this the killer? Who wants to know? Let's say my name is Ick. Let's say I have a large sum of unmarked bills. Oh man, this is getting heavy. And let's say I have a pain in the neck. This guy's an assassin. How can you help, Mr. Killer? <laughs> I can eliminate pains in the neck for the right price. This is pretty heavy stuff, huh? 
How about ten thousand dollars? Bye bye, Pain. The Pain's name is Joe Blitz. Careful, killer. He is one tough cookie. Don't worry. I eat cookies up. <laughs> Click. Yeah. So this is what I was doing when I was in high school. <laughs> All right, so what's going on here? I think this is a computer. God, you know, guys, I did this. This is 1990, man. I did this 24 years ago. <laughs> the train killer on his super info computer. Click. Boy, I was really uh, ahead of my time here. This guy's searching the web. Got it. Joe Blitch, age 29, works at a weapon-making factory, Go Guns. Received a BA in cooking and is single. Address 245 Joe Mama Court. <laughs> Time to go to work. Oh, man. It's kind of funny to kind of peek into my mind from, uh, you know, high school when I was like, I guess I was 17 or 18 when I did this. Um, but this, this, this computer really dominated my life. I mean, for... I think from like 12 to 18, I mean like probably six years, because I didn't get a PC till God, I mean, I was like like living with my wife at the time when I got a PC. Like I didn't have any, the train killer in his van outside of Joe Blitz's house. Because the first PC I probably got around 94, 95. This guy must be expecting trouble. He has no windows on his house. Looks as if I'm going to have to wait. So I guess this is the guy's house and we're going to, the, the assassins in this van open eek slam butta 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 <laughs> ping so there's a train killer holy house shut er. and so I guess this house is like a super house and this shit he says er. and these guns appeared Boosh. <laughs> it blows up the train killer's van kerboom oh man yeah, this makes me smile. It really does. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't looked at this stuff in like 20-some-odd years. No one messes with Joe Blitz. So the guy in the house blew up the, the car the assassin was in. Boom! Ugh! <laughs> so I was doing stick figure art. Never leave home without my iron closet. That's clever, John. Ow! Boom! My knee! So you can see how the cursor's drawing the characters and stuff. Well, Mr. Murderer, time for you to go die, die. Clever again. I shoot you, I shot you dead. How? Bulletproof vest. Ha ha ha. Bye, cock. Ah, it, mace. <laughs> the guy, I can't see. Kick. <laughs> well, I was doing like stick figure, like uh, art, you know, because that, that stuff's kind of big now. Later. Here's a little grenade for you. And so the guy jumps, runs, and gets into the iron closet, close. Badoosh! And the explosion goes off. <laughs> Time to go home. The train killer always gets his man. <laughs> So, yeah, what did you guys think of that, huh? That was pretty silly, right? <laughs> so, yeah, man, I don't know. I thought it would be fun to show this stuff. I mean, if you guys like this, I could do more of these Atari 800 videos. I mean, I got all these games. It'd be kind of fun to, like, to play, like, track and field in the arcade here and then play the Atari 800 version, you know? Maybe I'll get my Atari 2600 and we'll play Donkey Kong. Um, so, yeah, I thought this would be, like, a fun little different thing to do. So, yeah, that's my Atari 800 XL. <clears throat> I hope you guys like that and uh like i said i mean it's funny how far we've come with these computers but uh this was actually my second computer the first computer i had was a mattel aquarius and man that thing was a piece of garbage that was like the intellivision computer and it was just horrific and then when i got this thing oh my god the whole world opened up because it was just so deep and amazing and with all these floppy disks and all these games and the modem and the and the disk drive and and wow man this thing was the shit so all right man there you go that's it that's my little atari 800 xl that was donkey kong and my little Ataski movie hope you guys enjoyed that so yeah this was a little bonus video this week uh you know i release new videos every sunday and sometimes in between so go ahead and click that subscribe button 
and uh, we'll be getting back to the Journey Restore this weekend on Sunday. And uh, I got some other stuff I want to work on down here. So I, I'm, I might be amping up the video releases here the next few weeks because I got some stuff I want to do down here with the Nintendo Versus. Maybe we'll put the control panel overlay on the tap. Or I don't know. We got a, I got a laundry list of stuff I want to do. So anyway, subscribe to my channel. Check out my two podcasts. One is called Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. The other is Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com. I do both of those uh, podcasts live on Tuesdays at AllGames.com starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, and of course, anytime during the week, you can listen to those podcasts on iTunes and Stitcher and anywhere podcasts are found. So anyway, guys, that's it for me. I'll see you next time. Hope you guys like that. Let me know. I, I want to hear what you guys think of the uh, Atari 800 XL videos, because maybe I'll do more of those, because it's kind of fun for me to dust that thing off, because I really truly honestly have not really touched that thing at all in the past 25 years i mean i probably have turned it on like once every five years for like 30 seconds just out of curiosity but i've never really sat down and sat down and gone through my old discs because i don't i really don't remember what my little mind was doing back then it's and there might be more little treasures like my train killer uh, atasky movie so anyway all right guys that's it i'll see you later thanks for watching and bye <laughs>